What up? I'm Alex. This is the alternative sound. This is my new studio. And this is the title track of the album. So right from the get-go, we have the jag into the Fender Hot, which comes in in the chorus. On the left, we have the Strat, which is going into JMP. On the right, with wah, you can hear noise. Uh, John's playing above the nut with the jag and just some like kind of like wah type stuff in the beginning and then Chad comes in with a super simple nasty beat and the song starts I'm going to be flipping between the center channel left right the sides and the mid this is going to help demonstrate exactly what's going on in a song that sounds this big with not that many tracks on it. So this is the intro drums, which give us a unique view into what the actual drums sound like on the album. And if we just listen to the sides soloed out, you can hear something really interesting. Listen. If you listen to the kick, it sounds almost echoey. And that is, I believe, the sound of the acoustics in the room compressing into all of the mics. And by that, I mean the reflections coming off the hi-hat wall are going to be faster and less reverby than the far ride wall and so all of these drums and cymbals are reverberating and echoing and getting picked up into all of the mics, which creates this sound, which on the kick mic and the just the kick in all of the overheads sounds almost like a fast echo or a fast delay. So I'm going to solo out the sides and then the mid and then play it in the context of how it actually sounds in the song. This is the sides soloed out. This is the mid soloed out. You can tell that the mid is the focused clean kick sound. This is the left channel soloed out so you can hear the longer reverb of the ride side of the room. And this is the right side soloed out, which is the hi-hat side, so it's going to be cleaner because there's going to be um, less of the room sound from the ride side getting picked up. I've calculated roughly the reverb time in the space and on the hi-hat side it seems to be about 0.2 seconds and on the ride side it seems to be about 0.28, 0.3 seconds if that's relevant. And now Flea comes in and his DI is on the right and his amp is on the left. <laughs> Now, I originally said that I thought this had chorus on it, but I think what's actually going on is there's just a little bit of a delay between the DI and the amp that are hard panned that creates somewhat of a chorus effect in this section specifically. <laughs> In come the vocals. Again, I originally said that I only thought that the U87 was used on Under the Bridge, but the more I listen, the more I hear the U87 in conjunction with the 7B. Anthony's vocals on the left, definitely U87, without a doubt. Vocals come in, bass goes down. When I say bass, I mean bass amp. Obviously, 
because in mixing you can't add something without bringing something down right before the chorus comes in you can hear some noise in the left channel that again is the jag into the fender hot playing you know the double of the live guitar and then later on comes the harmony which is also played on the jag into the fender hot at the end of this first chorus we have a piano played by flea no doubt just simple quarter notes accentuating all the hits it's kind of tucked in sounds super dope two four fourteen buls's 1073 some de mono la to it awesome that's what production is not uh doing the most complicated mind-blowing thing but just doing the shit that sounds super awesome and you barely even notice it i doubt that you even noticed that this song had a piano awesome well done guys this transition is definitely not a punch this is just the chili peppers being an awesome band and just playing so one of the reasons that i do think that there still might be snare reverb with obviously you know bleed from the kick and other things into the snare reverb is because of things like this this is totally a reverse reverb i'm going to solo out the sides and see if you can hear the uh what i think is a reverse reverb on the snare Space i'm just gonna loop this so you can hear it. that is totally a reverse reverb i can't really even explain it um, it doesn't even make any sense to me. But what I can explain is coming up, which is a splice that is slowed down as it goes into the chorus. When Anthony says power, that is the slowed down I'm splice. Choice, is the power. This is delay on Anthony's vocals. In the next section, we have the sitar coming in and the tambourine what can you even say about it you know it sounds so dope coming out of the bridge it's totally a punch chad goes Bloop. no doubt about it that's a punch you can hear the vocal delay really well in this section and this is the harmony jag even louder in the next section This next section is either a punch-in or a splice. I would probably go with a punch-in because usually punch-ins have uh, clean fills uh, to help the punch-in. And Flea is using some kind of overdrive on his bass amp on the left and the Moog coming in into a spatial type delay, probably the H3000. The Moog, I would guess, is either played by Flea or Brendan. I would vote Brendan. Also in this section, you have to listen to the delay between the overhead mics. 
so the ride symbol is going quickly from left to right. And that's because of the short delay between the overhead mics and the fact that the overhead mic that's above the snare is being raised for this next louder section. And it's thus picking up more of the ride cymbal, which is creating somewhat of a delay. This can often be heard on a lot of albums from this time, especially a lot of albums that Brandon made. Also in this section, on the left side, you hear John playing some wah lead. It's really down in the mix, and it's uh, difficult to hear, but if you listen closely, you'll be able to hear it. And then you won't be able to unhear it. I think this is probably a splice into the solo section because I would venture to guess that the solo was played live with the band. It sounds like his strat into the JMP, so I'm going to assume that this is probably one of the things that he ripped live, and it does sound, you know, live-ish, and the blum ba ba it strikes me as something that was played live and then spliced. <laughs> Could also be a punch, you know, there's really just no way to know, but um, it has that live feel to it without a doubt. And then to close out the song, this pretty much proves, I think, that automation was used because there's mute automation on the drums and you can hear it in the, how it gets cut off. Shh. 